Hi everyone, welcome back to this series of Agile practice questions. We're nearing the end of these practice questions. We've nearly done around 200 practice questions all together and I hope you've come along for the journey and I hope you've really enjoyed yourself. This particular set are completely scenario based. It's gonna be a whole bunch of fun. Let's get into the questions. You are going through a retrospective with your team at the end of the sprint where the team have raised an issue that is slowing down their work. The Scrum Master guides the team to go through an exercise called the five whys. What is the purpose of this? What's the purpose of the five whys? Uh, and this is a really good way for dealing with any issues that come up when you're doing your retrospective. So is it to ask who, what, where, and when to find the cause of the problem? No, we're asking why multiple times until we get to the root cause of the problem. So to ask why the issue happened and then why for each reason after that until the cause is found. That's definitely our one. And this is from the lean, uh, from the lean method or the Toyota production system, uh, which basically is where a lot of the agile methods came from. They use the five whys to problem solve and find the root cause. Uh, the other ones that we've got to ask why the team is working on each feature to give the team purpose. No, it's more of a root cause thing. So finding the real cause of an issue and to allocate the five whys uh, to allocate five whys to each story card to ensure the team knows the reason for working on it. Uh, no, uh, not that one as well. Even though a story card should have the why at the beginning. That's a very good practice for your story cards. We use this, the five whys to problem solve. So let's go with answer B. Answer B. The five whys is a problem solving technique from Lean or the Toyota production system that asks why a problem occurred. For each answer, the team asks why again until they get to the real cause of the issue. Well done guys. All right, let's get into the next question. The scrum master in an agile team has asked the team to do a self assessment. What is the focus of this self assessment? How often the team meets during the week? How many story cards the team have completed? No, that's for our velocity, more likely. How much yearly bonus the team should receive? No, that's not really related to Agile at all. Uh, and you know that might be just different for every company that you work in, you'll find that. And how the team performs and delivers together. Yes, that's the one that we're looking at. And really, we, you know, it's a good way to check in with your team to ask a few questions around delivery and how we're working together uh, and just assess as an individual, um, you know, how they're feeling. And you know, it's a really good, good practice to do. Um, and also a good way of getting feedback, which is a great thing as a part of Agile. Let's go with answer D. The team self-assessment is used to gauge the team members' performance together, with results helping to identify what is working well and where improvements can be made. The team then meets to problem solve improvements and celebrate what is working well. That's a really good question. All right, let's get into the next one. You're working in an agile team and the business representative would like to get an idea of the risk associated with a particular feature. What will you do next? Show the risk management plan from your project management plan to the business representative. Uh, that's more of a, a waterfall approach probably with your risk management plan. Um, so let's see what else we've got. Ask the development team if they like the feature. Uh, you know, probably not specific around risk, although getting development teams input is very important. Hold a pre-mortem where each team member writes reasons they think the task or feature might fail, so these can be discussed. Yes, this is an excellent answer, and it's really just a risk brainstorming session. Um, in a post-mortem is at the end of a project where you discuss reasons that, uh, that things went wrong, so we already know that they went wrong, but this one is, uh, is brainstorming them in advance, so we're before these things might happen, a pre-mortem, pre-mortem you know, being death, I think is the, the word uh, in Latin or something similar. Uh, so yeah, why is something going wrong, for example? So I think that's gonna be our one. Uh, check your gut feel for the feature, and if it doesn't feel right, look into it more deeply. No, let's go with answer C. A pre-mortem looks at reasons for failure before they happen and is a great way to brainstorm for a card or feature. Typically, feed, uh, team members write their reasons down and discuss in a round robin style as some people may come up with the same idea. And then, you know, you can group those together in an affinity diagram, for example. So if you've got similar ideas, group them together. One, two, three, for example. Uh, you know, just other ways to do it. All right, doing really well, guys. Just a couple of questions to go. 
You're the agile team leader and are working through a team retrospective when an issue experienced by the team is raised. What will you do next? And we sort of touched on this before, didn't we? Um, because what we want to do is get to the root cause of an issue. Uh, so how do we do that? Uh, do we perform fishbone analysis, Kano analysis? Kano analysis is more for value. So what's the customer value? Regression analysis is for trends. So, you know, what's the trend in the data? Lots of data, data points. And what's the, the line of best fit, for example? Uh, you know, is it trending up? Is it trending down? That sort of thing. Uh, Multivary chart analysis is more of a uh, more of your your chart similar to a control chart. It can be, um, but with uh, with variable uh, inputs coming in. Uh, and so, you know, that uh, we could look at that, but probably the best one for uh, problem solving is our fishbone analysis, also called Ishikawa diagram, after the person who, who founded this from the Toyota production system again. Uh, and that's where we have the problem at the head of the fish, and then the fish bones, one, two, three, four, and we have brainstorming buckets. So do we have people? Uh, do we have process? Do we have... Um, so, uh, information that people are not getting and any is issues with the system as well. A uh, PIPs is a good way to remember it. People, information, process and system. And we can brainstorm into those buckets reasons why these things are going wrong and it's a really easy way to do it. Anyway, all that to say, let's go with answer A. When an issue is raised, the best course of action is to get to the root cause of the issue. Of the items presented, Fishbone or Ishikawa diagram uh, analysis is the best tool for root cause analysis. All right, very good. Let's get into the next question. You've been hired to lead a new project team as an agile project manager. You come on board to learn that the organization uses a hybrid model. What does this mean? And this, you'll see this on your PMP exam as well uh, because a hybrid approach is uh, part waterfall but also part agile or other other methods like incremental or iterative, for example. So let's see what we've got here. The team is a hybrid of developers, designers, and business users to get the best return on investment. That sounds good, but it's actually not the, the idea behind a hybrid model. The product you are developing will use both electricity and fuel for power, like a hybrid car, very funny. Uh, yes, not that one in particular. Uh, hybrid, we're looking at a different kind of hybrid. So let's see what else we've got. A combination of predictive, for example, a project plan, planned in advance, and adaptive, for example, iterations, backlogs, Kanban, uh, project methods will be used. Yes, that sounds exactly what we're after, exactly as we said. A hybrid team environment of physical software, physical and software reporting boards will be used. Uh, again, could get tripped up by that one but that's not the one. It's not a physical or a software environment. It's a hybrid uh, combination of project management methods. Let's go with answer C. There we are. A hybrid project management method uh, means using predictive and adaptive methods. Predictive being your traditional waterfall approach, pre-planned project plans, scope plans, quality, schedule, and risk. Adaptive approaches will be prioritized. Uh, we'll, we'll add a prioritized backlog of features and a Kanban board, um, maybe iteration planning, maybe uh, retrospectives. Uh, all of these things can be can be added to a waterfall, waterfall approach to make it a hybrid model. All right, there you go. We've got a couple of questions to go. Let's get into them. You're the product owner in an agile team working with the developers to create story cards to place in the product backlog. What other, th oh, in the three C's of user story, Creation, what do you do first? Okay, and we're creating a card. Uh, I mean, that actually could be the first thing. So uh, the three C's of user story creation. Uh, so, let, I mean, that's a good tip for us if we're creating a user story. Um, and then what do we do around creating a user story? Um, usually there's confirmation, for example, uh, and there's conversation. Uh, and then there's, maybe do is it creating? Uh, let's have a look. Create the card, which is the physical or software-driven media describing a user story. That sounds promising to me. Let's see what else we've got. Confirm the acceptance criteria. I think that would probably be last because we're confirming once everything, you know, we've, once we've gathered all of those things together. Have a conversation with the team to flesh out those requirements. I think that'll be number two because, uh, yeah, that, that seems reasonable. If we're creating the card, having a conversation around it because Agile prefers 
conversation to emails or to you know writing a letter or to you know even to uh, like ideally we'd pick up the phone or get face to face in conversation and get fast answers and last one catch defects before they're developed by working with quality testers before and after uh, not really related and you know um, just a general process in itself separate to this so I think let's go with answer A for creating the card and there it is yes creating the card conversation with the product owner and developers to explain how the software or design will be used and confirming that acceptance criteria and the definition of done or against the definition of done so that's a really good one wow that was great all right now we've only got two uh, two questions to go and i hope you've enjoyed these because i've really enjoyed going through them let's see what we've got in the last two you're working on the product backlog with your agile project team and creating user stories to be prioritized which of the below is the best answer for what should go into a user story card okay great uh, and user story card as we know we want the requirements and maybe you know an idea of the solution um, and so let's see if anything matches up with that okay key risks of the project and the featured being developed developed with their owners and mitigations that's more around the risk log for example um, or if there is a uh, if we're raising risk cards um, in agile so maybe not that one specifically a wireframe of the feature to be developed that developers can work with that's a good idea wireframes but you may not use it in every story card so what is the best answer for what should go into a user story card let's see what else we've got the requirement its criticality yes expected development and test duration that's fair uh, that would be for example the estimates that we're when we're estimating the cards uh, and that will help us figure out our velocity once we have completed a certain amount of those cards all together in a sprint uh, and the acceptance criteria for that story absolutely so what is the definition uh, of done how do we know when that story has been developed and is a success what are the steps uh, that we want to that we want to test it against I really like let us see here the benefit of the feature so that key stakeholders are aware of what they'll get uh, the benefit again is really good so some of these things could be combined but may not be in every user story and but I think the best answer here let's go with answer C there we are agile story cards should have the requirement criticality test details and clear acceptance criteria wonderful way to do it and now we're up to the last question well done guys let's see what we've got you're an agile project manager and have begun creating user stories with your agile project team to go into the product backlog you have created the card added requirements criticality and acceptance criteria how handy we just went through that <laughs> so that's a very good uh, good order to do things in now what are we going to do next now let's see what we've got place the card on the Kanban board so that the team can clearly see the future work hmm, maybe that's pretty good but we might need to do something before that like iteration planning for example um, have a conversation with the developers about oh so you've created the card oh this is good so this is the three C's maybe as well very timely that we've learned all these things in order so this is good so now if we've created it maybe we want to have a conversation I think that's probably right with developers about how the software will be used confirm the acceptance criteria and the definition of done I think that looks good prioritize the card in the upcoming sprint backlog to ensure the work gets done gosh that one looks good as well but maybe we need to wait to prioritize it until the card is more complete uh, so hmm, this is getting pretty tricky let's see what the last one is advise the project sponsor and risk manager of the feature details to ensure risks are captured uh, I think that we can safely mark that one out that's a separate process to everything that we're talking about here with creating the cards so between B and C uh, let's rule out A for now because we probably need to go through B and C first before we get to A uh, so do we prioritize the card first or do we have a conversation with the developers about the how, how the software will be used I think if we're looking at the three C's of user story creation let's go with answer B great the three C's on a user story creation okay and it goes into that as well card conversation and confirmation uh, and yeah finally we at the end of this we confirm the acceptance criteria and then you can place it in the backlog 
for the upcoming sprint. Oh, and you know what else we can't place into the backlog for the upcoming sprint is more questions because we're out of questions. We actually completed all of these questions. Well done, guys. This is what an amazing achievement. And if you haven't seen the other videos, you know, you can go back and check them out. There are so many Agile PMP questions, ideal for your Agile Certified Practitioner or your CAPM or your PMP or any other Agile qualification as well. And truly, I've had a great time spending all of this time with you doing these Agile questions to help you prepare for your exam. I really truly believe that you can pass your exam and I know you're putting in the effort and time and practice to do it and I truly believe in you. Keep going, never give up, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.